Hey what's up guys, this is Vectone and I have another tutorial video for you guys today. We are going to be talking about Native Instruments Massive and specifically how to actually start transitioning from a novice user of Massive to a more adept user. And what I mean by that is how to start getting your ideas from your head onto the computer. And that actually is easier said than done. Um, once you start working with Massive and other advanced plugins, you know, other, well, there's a ton of different you know synthesizers and uh, different plugins that have just endless settings that you can tweak and you know you're basically designing a sound from scratch from a, a just a little raw noise that you get and that can be very difficult especially when you have a really complicated sound that you want to hear and if you listen to a lot of the you know like especially electronic artists today you can listen to a lot of their sounds and be like wow how did they make this how on earth is this even done um, but it all can be done with a lot of practice and a lot of work in the you know in the program actually getting yourself familiar with the workspace. So um, hopefully I can help you guys start to get more familiar with Massive today. Um, this is specifically for Massive, but you can apply the concepts here to any plugin and you can, you know, you can do the same thing that I'm going to show you today. You can do this with any plugin, but I'm just going to be working in Massive. And also there uh, is a free sample pack that I'm giving you guys. It's about 25 different uh, sounds that I've made myself over time. Uh, since I've gotten Massive, I've actually, you know, built up my own library, and I have hundreds of different sounds now that I've made, all with practice, and I can, you know, actually evaluate my progress and see where I started from, and it's really awesome to see how much of an awesome library I've built up for myself, so um, I'm going to give you guys some of those samples, and they're going to be for free, uh, downloadable on my website, a link for that will be in the description. But let's just get right into this so you guys can see what I mean. So I right now have Massive pulled up. It's just a simple, you know, instance of Massive, nothing special, just the default loaded version. I'm not going to actually be going into what everything does in Massive here. What I'm really going to go show you guys is actually how to start doing this on your own and what's called reverse engineering sounds. Um, this is how you actually start to get familiar with how to make complex sounds. Basically what reverse engineering is, is you take a preset that someone else made, um, you know, someone who made the program, or maybe uh, you found some patches online, uh, like the ones I'm going to be giving you, and then you deconstruct those patches from just start turning off things, start turning down amplifiers, and see how the sound has changed as you turn things off. And then you build your way back up and get to back to the original sound. Uh, I've found in my experience that this is one really awesome way to start getting used to Massive and understanding how to make specific sounds or how, what to use to get a specific effect on your sound. Um, a great way to start doing this is Massive has a lot of different built-in libraries. If you actually bought Massive, it comes with a lot of awesome libraries here in the browser. That's where I clicked and then you can just go down to the sounds here and there's like tons of different volumes here um, with just uh, you know giant libraries of sounds, way more than the ones I've even made. And a lot of these are made by you know professional audio engineers. So you know, just you can pull one up, like here's one smiley face, and let's just look at it. At, you know, we can see on here that there's a lot of different things going on. We've got a lot of different macro controls. Let's just listen to it. So, you know, that's that's a starting sound. All right. And if you compare that to how we started with just a little tiny beep, then a lot has changed to the sound. And as you can see with a lot of different modulations going on here, you know, whoever made this, has done a lot to the sound. So what I would start doing is first I would take a look at these macro controls. These are just controlling different effects of the sound. You know, we've got detune, wave, cutoff, resonance, delay, dimension, decay, and release. You know, these don't actually, you know, permanently tweak the sound. This is for basically putting onto, you know, a live controller where you can tweak your sound as you're playing it and, you know, uh, do live effects on it. So basically these will af affect parameters, but um, this is mainly for like live performance, but it's still nice to start tweaking these and see how it sounds. So let's go ahead and try that. So we can see that that detune uh, really gives it a little bit of a chorus. Okay, so that obviously affects the waveform, and you can see that this has a little number two. We can actually find the waveform right here in the first oscillator. Um, so one thing I would look at when you look at any sound is just look at the three oscillators first of all and see what's going on here. You see that all three of these oscillators have their volume all the way up. 
but in reality, only one is turned on. Two of these are actually turned off, so they're not doing anything to the sound. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind while you're designing the sound or while you're uh, reverse engineering the sound. Um, but you know, so we can affect the uh, we can affect the waveform with this oscillator. But I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it off. Okay, so now we actually. You know, we can do the same thing now by actually changing this knob here. So that's what the, you know, second macro was doing. And that's one thing now that I found out about the sound. And you could find that out too if you were unfamiliar with this sound. This is how you start getting into it. Literally just start turning off things and playing the sound after every adjustment you make. Really play the sound before and after. Right now, it's just a little bit hard for me to do that because my microphone is a little bit far away from my keyboard. So I'm trying to do that, but but more of what I'm trying to do is actually convey to you guys how to do this. And you can go ahead and just do it later on whatever sound interests you. So um, th this is just one way to, to really get into it. Let's just look at another one here. Uh, I don't know. Um, let's just go to a different library. Um, let's see. We got no question. Let's see what that one sounds like and looks like. <laughs> Okay, we're obviously still on. There we go. Okay, so that really more sounds like a string instrument of some sort, some electronically made string instrument. But it's definitely a cool sound, and there's, again, a lot of macros. One thing that I noticed that a lot of the uh, massive engineers or the native instruments engineers like to do is they like to put a lot of different macros on their sounds. If you look at my sample pack, you'll notice that my sounds probably aren't as complex as the sounds they made, but it doesn't need to be complex to be good. That's one of the best, you know, pieces of advice you can take away from this video is that your your sound only takes a little bit to actually start getting really good. And uh, we can actually go into my library and let's see, I've got my massive presets here. This is, this is a library built up from just, you know, probably like two years of designing sounds. So like if you look at some of these sounds, you know, a lot, a lot of them really don't sound or look like there's a lot going on and that's because there's not. So this is a really deep uh, bass that I made, but let's just. So this is a simple sub bass. And um, as you can see, really all it takes is a couple of oscillators and some effects and you can have a pretty good sound going. You don't need a whole lot of macro controls. You don't need a whole lot of filters. You know, that's just extra sprinkles on top to make the sound that much better, you know? And that, those kinds of things actually come with practicing reverse engineering sounds, okay? So, you know, you can get a lot of the big ideas from reverse engineering the sound, and then you can also take away little details and how to like really tweak your sound and get those little details that you may, you know, find. But as far as getting a workflow going, it really just takes a basic understanding of Massive and a basic understanding of what the oscillators do. But reverse engineering is really where you should start. That is something I highly recommend. That's something I did for a long time. Uh, along with that, I actually, you know, made a lot of different um, efforts to like search up on the internet about how to design sound. I would look on forums. I would look on YouTube. Countless hours spent on YouTube looking at videos similar to the one I'm making right now, and downloading sample packs from other people and looking at their tracks too. You know, specifically because I was really interested in bass and EDM dubstep growls stuff like that so that's what I was learning how to make and I feel like I got pretty good at it you know some of my first massive sounds were just so crappy and now you know I'm coming out with a lot better I have all these like dubstep patches that I'm starting to make like here's some that I made let's see hard wobble this is actually one that's included in the sample pack <laughs> So that's just a simple dubstep wobble, and look look at the sound itself. You know, if you compare it to how the some of the sounds in the the browser look, some of the presets, you know, there's a big difference in in you know the filters and the macros. And I can apply all that too, and so can you. But basically, why what I provided is just a basic set of sounds. I provided some bass. I prov uh, provided some synths, uh, a few of like miscellaneous sounds, just a little bit of everything, so you can take away from my sounds. Feel free to use them in your video. Feel free to use them in your tracks or whatever you need to do. Really, mainly they're so you can reverse engineer them and see how I've done them. 
that's that's basically what I'm giving you as a starting point to start, you know, a, a group of sounds that you can start uh, looking at and breaking down and figuring out how they work and how I make my music. And then you guys can, you know, go off on your own path and start making your own sounds. And eventually you will start to notice that it gets easier. You know, at first it may seem like, man, I got to look up what every knob does or or you just don't know. You're just guessing what the knobs do and just seeing how it affects the sound. But eventually you'll say, oh, well, I, I'm looking for this effect and then it'll come to you. Oh, that's right. I know exactly what, what piece of uh, software I need or I know exactly what uh, knob to tweak, you know? Um, so it's really awesome to watch yourself grow. And I would suggest saving all the sounds you make. Just start saving them. Even if you don't like them, even if you don't think they're awesome, just make a folder in your computer, name it Massive Library, just start building up sounds. And eventually you'll have an awesome library of sounds that will reflect all your work and you'll be able to say, wow, I've come a really long way, this is awesome. So I hope this video helped you guys out a little and gave you all some advice. If you guys want to see more stuff like this, then just comment. And if you guys like the free content, comment more and I will give you more uh, massive samples. I'll work on some spe uh, like specifically for the videos. Um, and yeah, just I really want to uh, help you guys out and I really want to make some videos. So just let me know what you guys want to do or what you guys want to see me do and I'll do my best to show you all that. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a good night.